All right, Fresh, let's go to our number 12 team. And that's the Utah Utes out of Pac-12. This is a Pac-12. We're talking two West Coast teams right now so far. The Utes. What in the world was going on with Utah last year? I mean, you take a look at them in 2022. They have four losses on the year. They have 10 wins. And then their losses, though, are at Florida at the end of the game, at the very, very end of the game. And that's a di- we always talked about that week one, how difficult it is to play in the swamp in the first week of the season because of the humidity. And then they lose at UCLA, at Oregon. And then they lose. They get absolutely destroyed by Penn State in the bowl game. Fun fact for you, though. Last two years, if you didn't notice a trend there with the 22, the last couple of years, their schedule, um, Utah is 12 and 0 at home. Oh, I thought you were going to say that in our one of our first ever episodes, Fresh said they were one of the teams following and they won packed back to back Pac 12 titles. I thought that's where you're going with that one. No, nah, I mean, you beat yourself up enough about that. Like, at the I, 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 re- I did the reverse curse. I did the reverse curse and got them their two titles. Right. Kyle Winningham, he's, when are we going to start considering him as one of the best coaches in college football with what he does at Utah? I have him as the best coach in the Pac-12. Um, what he does with the resources is absolutely phenomenal. He puts a quality football team out there every single year, and they play hard-nosed football every single game. Um, you don't see the clunker losses from Utah. You don't see them losing to Cal or losing to Arizona. Um, they'll lose a game to a quality opponent. You know, that'll, that's going to happen. But they do not lose the games that other teams, we sort of like scratch our head. We're like, how the heck did they lose that football game? And it doesn't happen with Utah. And Will, and he brings in guys from the transfer portal. He develops them fifth year, sixth year seniors, uh, walk on guys. He brings them all in there and they perform and they play at the highest level and they just get the job done. And that's under his philosophy of how he's built that program. And you know what? It's going to really cut me to the core to say this, but he was come out. He comes out of the cloth of Urban Meyer. He was on Urban Meyer's staff when Urban was at Utah way back when. And I, there's something that might be along the same lines where it just you let the players play, you play to their strengths, you play hard nose and you instill pride in the football team, and they show up and they play for you every single game. I mean, this team, best defense in the Pac-12, and they were lights out in every single category last year, whether it's points per game, how many total yards, passing yards, and rushing yards per game. They led the league in every single one. They dominated. Um, offensively, actually, was sneaky good. You would, I mean, can, considering all the teams we've talked about in the Pac-12 and how great they've been and all the explosive th- offensive weapons that are out there in that conference, they still scored 38.6 a game, which was fifth in the league. That's tops in other couple, a couple other leagues. You ran for 217 a game. You threw for 250 a game. And you had the fifth best overall in total yards at 466. They don't – not any superstars. Yes, they had Dalton Kincaid and a host of running backs. But Cam Rising is the guy who's putting all the work. And if you're doubling up you know, Kincaid, he was banged up last year. They had to get production from somebody else. So the way they, guys, they put guys in position to succeed – they run the ball, play action, keep manage the offense, um, and they just get it done. And it's a testament to this philosophy of Whittingham, the execution by the offense, and the ingenious, ingenious creativity of the offense coordinator put the best players in position to succeed. And I have a feeling they're going to do that this year. Kincaid is gone. Last year, the number one running back coming into the year was Tavion Thomas. He left the team halfway through the year. They put in a couple other running backs toward the end. They found ways to make it work, and they were successful, and they won. Defensively, they lose they lose Clark Phillips the third. I got a feeling they're gonna pop in another cornerback somewhere and he's gonna come in there and be a new shutdown guy. Um these plug and play guys year after year, play to the system, play within themselves, play within the defensive or offensive scheme, and they're successful. And that's exactly what I expect them to do this year. The one thing that does worry me is that actually as of this week, there were reports coming out of Salt Lake City that Cam Rising's recovery from his ACL injury in the in the Rose Bowl is not progressing as they had hoped. So there is doubt that he would be ready for the opener, even the first couple of games. There was still maybe a 50-50 chance even playing for Florida going into it. Now it's even looking less and maybe even a little bit longer than that delay. So that does put worry some um, thoughts into my mind about how 
this offense will look early in the year if they don't have rising, they don't have that stability at the quarterback position, especially with Florida coming in. Like we said, you don't know what you're going to get in that first game. That's what worries me if they get caught behind the eight ball, if you will, with the injury sort of lingering, him trying to maybe come back too soon and be actually being detrimental to him and the team offensively. So that's the real key for Utah right now. If he's back ready to go week one, this team is in a great shape once again and move forward. Um, the schedule, though, is a big test. They are not being given any favors this year. They avoid Washington State and Stanford, which is the teams you actually want to play. They host Florida, and they travel to Baylor at a conference. That's not fun. You get road games at Baylor, like I mentioned, Oregon State, USC, Washington, Arizona. And the last time Oregon went to Utah, they got ambushed. So you do have Oregon coming to home. So maybe you can get you know payback again and get another game there. Uh, but the, they're not being given any favors in the schedule. This is going to be a true test of Kyle Whittingham. I actually might be coming off back-to-back Rose Bowls and back-to-back Pac-12 titles. They're not giving any gifts, and this actually might be the biggest test for this entire staff and this entire team going forward is how they're going to survive the season. And they end the season with Colorado. If it was Colorado in September, maybe they would be able to get a win. Colorado come November, who knows how that team is going to develop with the talent they bring in the portal and all the stuff's going on there in, in, in Boulder. They actually might be a much better football team the last weekend of the season than they are in September, and that actually is going to be a, could be a dangerous game for Utah. So this schedule is loaded. It is very, very tough. The floor, I think, is 7-5 and five just because they're playing such a hard schedule. If everything comes together, injuries aren't a problem, and this team has depth that rises up and plays at a high level, they could go 11-1 and one because they do have a mentality um, of winning and being tough. But it's going to have to be perfect for them. So seven, somewhere between 7-5 and five and 11-1, and, and, and one, that's a pretty wide range. But there's so many things that could happen with this Utah football team this fall. Um, and, and it's exciting to see what will happen when we kick off in, uh, in late August. Take the COVID year out. How many times, when was the last time Utah had a seven-win season? It was 2017. And prior to that, they had not won less than nine games since 2014. Again, we talked about Oregon State, about how great it's been since, like, they only have three winning seasons. And Texas, in the last 15 years, how many times they've won double-digit games. In the since we graduated college fresh 2008, this team has seven double digit winning seasons. You take a look at that in the last, you know, like I said, since 2014, nine wins, 10 wins, nine wins, seven, nine, 11, COVID year, 10, 10. This is Utah is becoming and they're becoming a powerhouse program out there out west. They really are. Wow. And, Yes, it, it, it's insanely quiet because people will go, yeah, it's been, they've had success for the last three or four years, was what people will think. And you go, no, this, this team is really, really good. Since Kyle Winningham took over as the head coach, he has a 67% winning percentage since becoming the Utah head coach. This is, it's fascinating to see what we're going to get with Cam Rising coming off that ACL injury. Uh, I had not heard that he wasn't like progressing with that. It'll be fascinating to see. And it's going to be interesting how they replaced Kincaid. They got a couple of really good tight ends coming up through the pipeline. This is a team that runs a two tight end set. They're going to run the football. Ninth in the country last year with 41 sacks. They're going to return nine starters on this defense. That defense is loaded with NFL talent. Yes, you got to replace Reed. You got to replace Clark Phillips. But other than that, this Utah defense is really, really good. And a lot of those key contributors came back. Again, you got to stay healthy. But this is a brutal schedule. You're spot on. Your bye week is October 7th. Tough game. Florida comes into town, especially if you don't have Cam Rising that night. That's a Thursday night game in week one to kick off week one. Uh, going into Waco, tough. UCLA comes into town. I don't think that that'll be too bad, but going into Corvallis. So this, you know, you're hoping, worst case scenario, going into the bye week, you got to be 4-1 right there. Going to USC. You've had USC's number for the last couple of years. And you give Lincoln Riley fit. 
now can you win in LA? When they're and and if I'm US if I'm USC, I'm I'm spending all offseason preparing for Utah. Because Utah is really just taking me out to the woodshed. And having to follow that up with Oregon, that's a really tough two game stretch. And then a couple weeks later, traveling all the way up to Washington to play Michael Penix Jr. We haven't even got to him. And maybe was like, think about that. We have not even talked about Washington yet and how good this is. So <coughs> going through, this is an impressive team. It's a tough road to hoe. I'll say that the floor is nine. I'm going to bet on Kyle Winningham. I'm going to put some respect on his name. But if it all, again, tough road, but Utah, Utah could do this. I'm going to say, I'll give him floor nine, ceiling 11. I mean, it's just what he does. You know, I think, you know, like I was doing research on, you know, all the Pac-12 coaches early. And if you want to check out the article, it's on spinablesports.com. But you sort of go back through and you just, like you rattle off all the wins. You're like, this guy just finds ways to get victories. You don't see that they don't put, you know, 20, 15 guys in, in, you know, two back-to-back classes. You don't see 20 Utah players getting drafted into back-to-back years combined. Um, it's not like an Alabama or, you know, or, or a Georgia or USC or Ohio State or a Michigan where they're just churning out players left and right. These guys are coming in there. They're working hard. Some of them make practice squads. Some of them are undrafted dudes. Um, some guys just go off and enjoy life after football. Um, but when they're there at Utah, they give everything for the entire state. And uh, they play for each other and they play for their, you know, their coach. And the coach loves them. These guys love each other. And that's kind of where the culture thing comes into play where sometimes it's not always about X's and O's. It's about culture. And guys are fired to play for each other. They show up on game day and they make things happen. Yeah. I, I, again, I got a lot of respect for Utah. I do. I really do respect what Kyle Winham's doing out there. So, 